Hi boys and girls. Well today we're going to read a book that's called Polar Animal Adaptations and it's by Lisa J. Amstutz. Well, an adaptation is where I change something to be able to survive better in my habitat. For example, a penguin has very downy feathers at first, and then it changes to a more slippery, refined feather later on when it goes to the water, because they know that the downy feather is going to be no good in the water. It will get heavy, it will make them sink, but the downy feathers are needed to help keep them warm while they're living on the land when they're a chick. So that's an adaptation that they have. They have also adapted their feathers to have an oily coating so that the water rolls off. Because if the Arctic water stayed on them like the water does after we've had a bath or a shower, it might freeze on them and turn them into a popsicle, which is not a good idea. And they don't have a bath towel to dry themselves with. So they created oily feathers so that they could just shake off the water and it wouldn't stick to them. Let's find out some other polar animal adaptations to see how animals have adapted so that they can fit in and survive in the habitat where they've chosen to live. Ooh, here's another one of my favorites, the Arctic fox. A great adaptation is to have that nice, warm, thick, white fur that makes me into a tight little circle and I can just take a nap and I have a fluffy tail that can cover my cold wet nose and help stop it from freezing. Ah, a table of contents. Going to get some information which is great because then I'll get another wrinkle on my brain and the more I know the more I can grow. Life at the Poles. The North and South Poles are like giant freezers most of the year. Burr. Polar animals have special ways to stay warm and find food in their snowy homes. We call these ways adaptations. Here's our penguins. What to wear? Some polar animals wear fur coats to keep warm. A musk ox wears two. The bottom coat is soft and warm. The top coat is shaggy and long. The Arctic fox's coat is the warmest of any mammal. When the fox gets chilly, it sits on its furry tail like a cushion. Then it tucks in its nose to stay nice and warm. Did you know that polar bears have hollow hair? Tube-shaped fur traps heat in the middle. All that heat soaks into the bear's black skin. Why black? The dark color is best at holding in the heat. And if you were at school, we would do an experiment. We're going to save that for Fun Friday for you to try. So here's our polar bear. And under all that white hollow hair is black skin. Even the pads of his feet are black to help absorb the warmth from the sun trap the heat. Snowy owls change colors by the season. Their white winter feathers match snow. Brown summer feathers match plants and rocks on the tundra. One of the owl's prey, the lemming, turns colors too. It changes from brown to white, just like the owl. An adult owl eats up to five lemmings each day, but only if he can find them.
very smart of the lemming to change colors, to match its environment, to make it harder for the prey to find it. Penguin chicks have fuzzy downy feathers to stay extra warm on land. As the chicks become adults, they grow waterproof feathers to hunt in the icy ocean. Another bird, the partridge, grows its own fuzzy slippers. Its feathery feet keep it warm when walking on the cold tundra. It's a great idea, just like I wear fuzzy slippers in the house to keep my feet toasty on a cold day. How else do polar animals stay warm? Blubber. Ring seals have a layer of fat called blubber under their skin. Blubber keeps the seals warm and helps them float. A bowhead whale's blubber is about 18 inches thick. Bowhead whales live in cold water all year long. Wow, can you imagine wearing a winter jacket that is 18 inches thick? That's about as long as from your fingertip to your elbow. Polar body parts. Arctic hares don't need earmuffs to keep their ears warm. Their ears are short and fuzzy. Long ears would get too cold oof, and suffer from frostbite. Although their ears are short, Arctic hares are bigger than other hares. Their large body size helps hold in the heat. So they're bigger than a regular rabbit or hare, but their ears are smaller than a regular rabbit or hare. So that's their adaptation, the thing they changed to help them survive in their habitat. Many polar animals have big feet to help them walk on snow without sinking. A wolverine's big paws act like snowshoes. A reindeer's wide hooves are also good for walking on snow. More than that, they help the reindeer dig under the snow for food. So their feet are wide to help them walk on the snow, but also act like a shovel to move the snow out of the way so they can find the lichen on the rocks that they like to eat. Walrus tusks look like giant teeth, mm -mm. but they aren't made for chewing. Walruses use their tusks to climb out of the water, chop holes in the ice, and fight too. And we know that walruses use those bristly hairs to feel for their food on the ocean floor in the dark ocean. People put antifreeze in their cars. It keeps the water inside from freezing. Atlantic cod make their own antifreeze. It keeps them from turning into frozen fishicles. <gasps> they don't want to be fish sticks in the icy ocean. Whoa, what a great idea. Got my own antifreeze to stop my blood from getting frozen. The wood frog has special blood too. As the frog freezes, its heart and breathing stop. In the spring, it thaws out, good as new. Wow, could you imagine freezing solid to live through the winter? And then in the spring, you can thaw out and be good as new again. Polar animal behavior. The Arctic ground squirrel snoozes oh, through the coldest part of the year. It hibernates for up to eight months. It is one of the few polar animals that hibernates. Many polar animals migrate to warmer places in winter. The Arctic tern flies from the Arctic 
to the Antarctic each year. Then it flies back. It can fly more than a million miles in its lifetime. Wow! So it literally flies from one end of the planet to the other end of the planet, and then the next season flies back again. Whew. From colored feathers to wide hooves, polar animals are experts at living in the cold. Adaptations help polar animals survive in the icy Arctic and Antarctic areas. Wow, there's our friend the polar bear. He blends in with that snow really well. It would definitely be hard for his prey to spot him coming. What a clever idea. Great adaptation to have white fur in a white habitat. Well, scientists, in your packet that you got, you have a book that looks like this one. And you have a page that has some body parts on it. It's going to be your job to match the correct body part or adaptation to the correct animal in your book. Mm, this front one is just an outline. I think I know which one belongs there. And as I go through, it tells me the snowy owl and then the bottom says, my spotted feathers help me hide. So I'm guessing that I'm looking for spotted feathers. On the reindeer, my big hooves help me find food. I guess I'm looking for a hoof to cut out and put in there. Arctic fox. My small ears help me stay warm. So I think I might be looking for a small ear for that page. And then my wide feet help me walk on ice. I guess I'm looking for a foot for that page. And then when I'm done, I can be really scientific and make my book. That looks kind of plain. Be scientifically correct. What a great job this person did taking a plain item and making it look more scientific, more real, so that people know, oh, I'm going to get some information about some polar adaptations. So scientists, get together, get hard at work on putting those correct adaptations on the correct page and then making it look like a real science book.